So, hello and welcome to the Mega Processor. It's finished, so I thought I'd take you on a little tour of it. Um, it consists now of around about 40,000 transistors and about 10,000 LEDs. It's about 10 meters long and 2 meters tall, weighs about half a ton and burns about 500 watts of electricity. It can run at a speed of up to around about 8 kilohertz, but I've slowed it down to a hertz so that we can see the um, lights flashing and things changing. So the mega processor is a processor, uh, so the, like this one from the old days. Uh, and these things are made out of lots of transistors, but very small ones. I've made the mega processor out of larger ones so that we can see what's going on. And I've also arranged them on little boards so you can see the small low level logic functions that they're carrying out and how they're all joined together with the wires on a schematic. And I've also put LEDs on the inputs and the outputs so that you can see the logic levels going into a gate and what comes out. So in a, mega, in a processor, there are, lot, there are several um, functional blocks. Um, one example is the uh, registers, which act as kind of scratch pad when you carry out calculations. So these are the registers for the mega processor. We've got four of them here. Um, the next main functional block in the processor will be the ALU, which carries out all of the arithmetic and logic functions. And that's this area here, so this is the main ALU. We have the second adder up here. So as well as the general purpose registers and the ALU, which does the sums, uh, we tend to have some special purpose registers for um, doing things in the processor. So for example, we have the program counter, which keeps track of where you are in a program, a stack pointer, uh, which also helps in keeping track of where you are uh, in a program and helps with some data flow. Uh, and then there's some registers for um, looking at where we are writing to in memory. So carrying on around here, this is where the instructions arrive first of all um, to tell the processor what to do. So they arrive up here. And then these three modules try and work out uh, what to do for that instruction. So the initial um, interpretation happens down here and then these refine that result. So processors um, carry out a sequence of instructions and some instructions are complex and need a, a sequence of operations. And all of that sequencing is carried out by the state machine, which is this module up here. And the last register in the processor is the status register, which is this one here. And this keeps track of the results of calculations, whether the answer was zero or negative, and things like that. So these five frames so far uh, form the main body of the processor. Um, here we start to move into the outside world. Uh, so this region up here is the external interface. Now that in the outside world, I use a bit more uh, modern technology uh, to give myself some peripherals. So I've got some extra memory here. Um, and there's some timers and counters. And also some I.O., some switches and a joystick, which we'll use a bit later on. And here's the place also where we can control the clock and so forth. As I said, at the moment it's running at out of hertz. Um, we can do things like halt the processor. So if you um, see now nothing much is happening, and I can single step with single clock cycles. Like so. So if we get the run gain, we can also change the processor speed. So at the moment it's a hertz. So if I take it up to around uh, at its maximum uh, shade under seven kilo, eight kilohertz up to here. Oops, that won't work. Up to about there. And then the, um, the next frame um, is some, a small amount of memory, 256 bytes, which I've made in the same way as the rest of the processor with, small, uh, with transistors and LEDs. So you can see the contents of everything in the memory. Now if you ask yourself what you can do with a processor like this, then the answer is you can play games like Tetris. So let's do that. So for Tetris, the idea is to um, stop the lines getting to the top of the screen, and we can um, for as much as, for as long as possible. Uh, if I can complete a line, then it disappears. Uh, it doesn't look good at the moment. Oh, there it is. One, one, uh, so you can turn the, the shapes around as they fall uh, to try and make them better. Um, fit into the spaces. 
Um, oh, yeah, so there's left, right, and um, and I can't do this and talk at the same time. Ah, game over. <laughs>